Hello and welcome to the Dell EMC Power Store video. In this video, we will be showing an administrator can provision different storage resources. In this Power Store video, we will cover different topics. We will start off with the volumes, then cover volume groups. Also, we will cover file systems and storage containers. Lastly, we will show how this all can be done through the Power Store Manager. First topic to go over is volumes. Similar to any primary storage, a volume is a block storage resource with a defined capacity. Within the Power Store Manager, volume or multiple volumes can be created at the same time. In a multi appliance cluster, volumes are created and storage in a single appliance. Once the volume is created, the resource balancer will identify which appliance it's going to be created on if it is a multi-appliance cluster. The user also has the option to manually select an appliance. Volumes can be moved between appliances in a cluster after creation using the migrate feature. Once the volume is created, it has a different properties associated with it such as capacity, performance, protection, alerts, and host mappings. To create a volume, the administrator has to provide a name to the volume and the size. In addition to general information, there are also additional properties that can be set, such as associated volume group, if any, volume protection policy, if any, and lastly, volume performance policy, which defaults to medium. This performance policy determines how many system resources the volume will receive if the processing power of the system becomes fully utilized. This is a relative ranking, so resources with a high value receive more than those with a medium or with low. This distribution of system processing power only happens if the system becomes fully utilized. Otherwise, there is no difference between resources with different performance policies. User can also select host to map the volume or volumes to at the same time of creation, or can choose to map the volume at a later time. There are a few other tasks that can be done with volumes. For example, you can take a thin clone or a snapshot. Once the volume is created or during the create volume wizard, a host or multiple hosts can be mapped to a volume. After creation, volume size can be extended. However, it cannot be shrunk. After discussing volumes, we'll talk now about volume groups. A volume group is a logical container with multiple volumes or volume thin clones. The reason why an administrator will use a volume group is to have a single management point in managing different volumes at the same time. When creating a volume group, only a name is required. The volumes will be added after it's created. The volumes that are contained in a volume group are called members. The members can be found under the properties of the volume group. Setting protection policy is also available as well during the creation of a volume group. The last option that is available when creating a volume group is apply right order consistency to all volumes in the volume group. We will visit this option once we are in the demo section. There are a few things regarding volume groups an administrator has to consider. First, a volume can only be part of a single volume group. All volumes in the volume group are placed in the same appliance, since Power Store T can scale up to four appliances. A volume that is part of the volume group cannot be assigned another protection policy if the volume group is assigned one already. A host mapping cannot be done on the volume group level. It is assigned individually to the volumes that are members to the volume group. We will be showing this process during the demo. Last thing to note is a single volume cannot be restored if the right order consistency is enabled for the volume group. 
the entire volume group and all member volumes will be restored. PowerStore provides a unified solution, which means file systems are supported with PowerStore T appliances. First topic to discuss is the NAS server. A NAS server is a logical container that allows the user to access their data and their file systems. A NAS server is associated with the protocol and the environment configurations. It's a requirement before creating any file systems in the system. NAS servers are used to enforce multi-tenancy. When a user creates a NAS server, a different user does not have access to other NAS servers. NAS server has its own independent configuration, such as DNS, LDAP, and etc. There are different protocols that the NAS server supports. For example, NFS, SMB, multi-protocol, and FTP, SFTP. User can set the protocol while creating the NAS server or after it's created. After talking about NAS servers, now let's talk about file systems. Once a NAS server is available, file systems can be created. Once the file system is created, it cannot be moved to another NAS server. To create a file system, there are a few things that need to be specified. First, NAS server, name of the file system, and size. Once that is all done, user can create an NFS export or SMB share, depending on what protocol or protocols are enabled on the NAS server. Also, the user can set a protection policy if desired. Within the file system, there are a few things that can be done. For example, snapshots and thin clones can be taken. File systems benefit from compression and deduplication. Replication is not supported in file systems, neither are via file primitives. Lastly, we'll discuss about storage containers. PowerStore automatically provisions a default storage container across all the cluster capacity. When the VASA provider is registered for a PowerStore T appliance, this storage container becomes accessible and can be added as a VVOL data store. For PowerStore X, the VASA provider is automatically registered and the VVOL data store mounted as a part of the initial configuration. The host needs to be registered using iSCSI or Fiber Channel. Once the hosts are registered, they automatically provide access to the storage container. A user can create additional storage containers. Another feature with a storage container is a user can create a quota. A high water mark can be specified, which determines when an alert will be generated for the administrator based on the capacity utilization of a storage container. In this demo, we will show how you can create a volume and a volume group, and how to map them to a host. Also, we will show how you can create a NAS server, file system, and a storage container. Starting from the dashboard page, to create a volume, navigate to Start from the main top menu and click Volumes. You can see the list of the volumes and thin clones in this page. To create a volume, simply click Create. There are some required fields in order to create a volume. First, give the volume a name and a description if desired. Decide how many volumes you would like to create and the size. Additional information is available. For example, adding this volume to a volume group, specify a volume protection policy and volume performance policy. It can be high, medium, or low. We'll keep it to medium. A user can create a host mapping while creating a volume. In this example, we will select the available host. Click Next to continue to the last step. Click Create to finalize the operation of the volume creation. Here is the volume that we just created. Moving to Volume Groups from the same top menu, click Storage, then click Similar Flow to create a volume. Click Create to create a volume group. To create a volume group, a user needs to provide a name. Protection policy is optional. 
A checkbox is available to enable write order consistency. Write order consistency will have the system treat the volume group as a single entity when a snapshot is taken or if it is replicated. This feature enables all volumes within the volume group to be crash consistent. Once everything looks good, click Create. Once the volume group is created, you can add members to it. To add members, click into the properties of the volume group and go under Members. Here you have two options. 1. Add existing volumes. 2. Add new volumes. In this example, we will add existing volumes. Select the available volumes and click Apply. Note, a single volume can be only in one volume group at a time. To map a volume group to a host, it needs to be done at the volume level. To map volumes with a host after creation, select the volumes, click under More Actions, and click Map. Select any available host and click Apply. Now that we covered how to create volumes and volume groups and map them to a host, let's check how we can create a host. To create a host, click Compute from the top menu and click Hosts and Host Groups. To create a single host, click Add Host. Provide the host to friend the name and choose the operating system. Select the protocol type and click Next. Then select the host initiator click Next to review the summary, and then click Add Host. Moving to the Host to Group, from the same page, click Add Host to Group. Provide the name, choose the type of hosts, and select the hosts that are available. And lastly, click Create. Notice the hosts that are in the Host to Groups get removed from the main page of the host. Checking the host to group properties, you can see the host we just added. Now, let's take a look to the file system sites. To begin working with file systems, the administrator has to create a NAS server. To create a NAS server, click NAS servers under storage and click create. Provide the name, IP address, gateway, and VLAN ID. Select the protocol type and choose the Unis directory service if needed, and then enable the DNS server. Then I click Next to review the summary, and I click Create. Once the NAS server is created, now it's the time to create a file system. Click File Systems under Storage, and I click Create. The Create File System wizard comes up. The first step is to select the NAS server, then I click Next. Provide a unique name and the size of the file system. In the next step, you have to provide a name to the share. Note the NFS export path. In the configure access step, you can select the security and the default access to the host you will add. Provide a SEPI share name if needed. Then click next to continue. Setting a protection policy is also available during the creation of a file system. In this example, we will skip it and go to the summary page. Review the summary, and once everything looks good, click Create File System. Once the file system is created, you can view the properties of the file system and modify if needed. Lastly, in this demo, we will show you how you can create a storage container. A storage container can be mounted in vSphere as a vVault data store and used for storage. If this is a PowerStore T, make sure you have a vCenter configured. A PowerStore X system will automatically have this configured. PowerStore creates a default thin storage container across all available storage. Additional storage containers can also be created. To create a storage container, navigate to the storage containers under Storage and click Create. Storage container requires only a name. The user can enable storage container capacity quota to limit the usage. Once it's enabled, identify the container quota size. In this example, we will use the storage container that is created by the cluster. For a PowerStore X system, the storage container will be automatically mounted in vSphere as a vVault data store after it's created. For PowerStore T, 
Let the Sphere Administrator will need to create a new VBOL data store and select the storage container that was created. You can see that this storage container is used and two virtual volume exist on it. Thank you for watching Power Start Provisioning video. For more additional resources, please check the listed white papers or visit the link dell.com slash docs.